Hey guys and welcome to a brand new video here on FPL Now, your number one source for tips, tricks and everything you need to know for Fantasy Premier League Football. Today we're going to be going over my team selection for Game Week 12, so if you're excited for the video, drop a like down below, let's try and hit 35 likes, leave a comment what is your team looking like for Game Week 12 as of right now, subscribe if you're brand new, let's get into the video. So, starting things off with these team selection videos, what I always like doing at the start is showing you my points total from the previous game week. So, in game week 11, I came out with 54 points, which isn't that bad, considering the average was 42, and I did get a red card with Sanchez with a minus one. Um, should have been 57 points, but you know, Sanchez decided to have a moment of madness and cost me three points. Um, so very unfortunate, but yeah, 54 is not too bad. It was a green arrow. I'm kind of just trying to rebuild from that awful uh, decision of captaining Havertz over Salah when Salah scored three goals and got an assist and Havertz just turned up. It wasn't great. Um, so just trying to rebuild my score from that. So I think I'm up to like 700, I'm 740th thousandth in the world right now. I think I was like 300,000 before the Salah decision. Um, but yeah, just trying to build back uh, what, I, what I once had. So uh, the back three kind of helping me out, to be fair. Trent got me 12 points. I don't know how his assist was an assist on the Origi goal. I, I, I mean, I'm going to take it, but yeah, I, don't, I don't think that should have been an assist, but it is what it is. Uh, Rudiger got two points. Um, I mean, he had two shots from inside the box with headers on corners. Like I say, Chelsea had like 15 corners that game. And Rudiger got close a few times, but unfortunately did not find the back of the net. One day he's going to score and everyone's going to jump on him. I know he is. He's having so many shots. He's had more shots than the fullbacks and he's a center back. So hopefully he does convert some points soon and does get me some points. Uh, Livermento got me six points. Uh, he's now flagged. He did pull out of the under 21 England squad. I think it's just a knock. I'm hoping he's going to be okay for Norwich. But um, yeah, he did get me six points as well. So yeah, the back four, well, the back three and the keeper, um, respectable, you know, 12 points from Trent really saving me. Uh, a lot of people had Cancelo, which is why uh, the average kind of shot. If you had Cancelo and Trent, then you probably had a good game week. Uh, in the midfield, we had Mbumo, uh, of course, scored an offside goal, which was really annoying. Rafinha bringing in nine points again. That's consecutive nine points for, for the Brazilian wonder kid. Uh, he's, he's really, really saving my game weeks. But uh, yeah, I mean, the goal was, it, it shouldn't have really happened. It was just off a free kick. It was like what he did against, I think it might have been against Newcastle or, or someone, I can't remember. Um, but yeah, he basically just had a free kick and kind of crossed it in and then no one really went for it. And then he just found his way into the back of the net, which I'll gladly take. Um, but yeah, it was a nice nine points there. Uh, Salah getting another attacking return. Uh, only bringing in 10 points, though. I think he's had an attacking return in like the nine, last nine games. He hasn't scored in the last two, though. There's just been assists, but... It was, a, it was an FPL dream, though, the, the Salah assist into Trent goal. Because Salah literally just rolled it to Trent and then he just banged it into the top bins. Um, which was obviously a nice assist for Salah and the goal for Trent. So, yeah, a couple more of those, please. I'd gladly take those. Uh, Havertz scoring and getting a bonus point. Uh, eight points, really nice. because Not a lot of people own Havertz, so that, that really helped me out. Jimenez got two. Again, could have got a penalty, but VAR decided to say no. Uh, Antonio, I don't know how he didn't score uh, with, with West Ham scoring three goals against Liverpool. He wasn't involved in any of them. Really, really unfortunate. It was like the week before where Havertz wasn't involved in seven of the goals that Chelsea scored. It's just, it's just my luck that the player I have isn't involved in any of the goals when they score a lot. It's just really annoying. And then Vardy as well uh, did get an assist, but was VAR'd offside uh, by the littlest bit. It, it was just an unlucky game week in regards to what could have been. Like, Mbumo could have got me a goal. Jimenez could have got me a goal. Vardy could have got me an assist. Havertz could have got me another goal. He, he did miss from, like, four yards out. Uh, Rudiger could have got me a goal. Sanchez might not have got a record. It, it is what it is. But, yeah. Uh, I decided to uh, bench Semedo this week, which was a good decision. Brought me in the two points that he usually does, you know. He's consistent. Consistently bad. Uh, Sissoko with one point, and then Williams bringing in the two points points as well getting their first win of the uh, of the season but of course now Fark has gone which I don't really understand they finally got a win and then he's just gone but it is what it is so that was my game week 11 54 points like I say not terrible green arrow can't complain uh, coming into my team selection for game week 12 though I have already used my transfer um, but again we'll go over the team uh, as of right now so uh, in goal we have steel uh, I'm hoping that steel plays I didn't want to waste a transfer on Sanchez because uh, it would just be me taking a hit uh, but I'm hoping that Steele does play. Some Brighton fans are saying that he's not the, the backup keeper, but he's been on the bench in every single game. So it makes sense that Steele would play. But if he doesn't play, then I'm playing with 10 players. I mean, I would probably like to play him against Villa. Um, 
like if if he was um, if he was available. But um, yeah, whether he plays or not, I'm not really sure. But if he does play, hopefully it's a clean sheet because Villa are just terrible at the moment. They have just sacked Dean Smith. Um, so yeah, fingers crossed that he does play, which he should. He's been on the bench every single game. Why would their second keeper not be on the bench every single game? He has to surely play. Um, but yeah, that's my goalkeeper. The back three, as of right now, we've got Trent, who is at home to Arsenal. Uh, I don't know how that uh, game is going to go, to be fair, because Liverpool are conceding. You know, they've, they've conceded... Um, Two against Brightford, Brightford, Brighton. Then they conceded three against West Ham. They are conceding goals. Um, so it's five in the last two. So Arsenal are on form at the moment. It really is. It, it could go either way, to be fair. I honestly I honestly think it could go either way right now. Uh, we've got Rudiger away at Leicester. Um, again, Leicester's kind of in the mud as well. They just can't seem to get a win. Um, but Chelsea did just concede to Burnley. Their first uh, goal from open play in the league this season. Uh, hopefully that doesn't happen again. To be fair, though, apparently if you own a Chelsea defender, uh, if you only own like one, then you want them to concede because everybody has like one or two Chelsea defenders. So if they concede, like it's actually better for you. Um, but if you don't have them, obviously it's bad because if they don't concede, then it's loads of points you're losing. So it's a really weird situation. FPL's really weird this year. Um, with, with the fact that like Salah, everybody pretty much captains him every week. And then Root, and then like your Chelsea defence, you want them to concede. It's really weird. Uh, and then we have Liveramento away at Norwich. Uh, really hoping he is fit. It is just a knock, 75% chance of playing. I'm sure we'll get some information soon from press conferences. But yeah, he did pull out of the under 21 uh, or under 23 or whatever it is. Um, squad with an injury. I don't know how he injured himself. I don't know if it was in the um, in the previous game, but we'll have to wait and see for press conferences. I'm really, really hoping he can play though, because Norwich away is not a fixture you want to miss out on. It's kind of like the Rafinha situation all over again. Like a lot of people jumped off Rafinha when he had Norwich the next game week because he was injured, and then he scored, which was great because a lot of people decided to get rid of him. So it's kind of like the exact same situation. It's Norwich away. They have just sacked their manager. Southampton are playing really, really well at the back this year. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping the Livermental is uh, is available. But that's my uh, that's my back line and my goalkeeper. Coming up next in midfield, we have Mbumo away at Newcastle. Um, he's got to score soon, surely. He actually has a bigger goal threat than Gallagher. Gallagher is just finding the back of the net and Mbumo well, when he doesn't, he hits the bloody woodwork. And then when he does, it's chalked offside. So it's just a really annoying situation. Uh, Rafinha away at Tottenham. I'm not really expecting anything from Rafinha this week. But that's okay. You know, he's just on he's on the back of two nine-point hauls. So he's okay. He can take a break. If he gets two points, it is what it is. I mean, if he scores, fantastic. Um, but if he doesn't, I'm not going to be annoyed at him. Because he's done well. He saved my last two game weeks. It's, just, it's time for someone like Mbumo to bloody score. Uh, and then we've got Salah at home to Arsenal. He is my captain. I mean, I'm just not going to captain anyone else. In fact, I think after this game week, I think Salah is just like a ridiculous captaincy option. Yeah. So he's got Southampton at home, then Everton away, then Wolves, Villa, Newcastle, Tottenham, Leeds, Leicester. Like, he's just someone I'm going to captain every single game week. Like, it, it, it's just not going to move on anyone else. The only time I think I would captain someone else is when Sun is at home to Norwich in game week 15. But who does Salah have in game week 15? Salah has, Salah has Wolves away. So I think Norwich Owen would probably be a better fixture. But I know if I don't captain him, he's just going to... That's exactly what I did last time. I captain Havertz against Norwich at home. He blanked and Salah got a hat-trick and assist. So I don't think I can even risk it this time. Um, and then I have brought in Sun already as my uh, as my free transfer. I got rid of Havertz, brought in Sun. As I said previously in the last like team selection, whatever um, Havertz did in game week 11, I would be bringing in Sun. Even if he scored like 16 goals, I'd be bringing um, Sun in. The reason that I've done my transfer so early is because I don't want to be priced out of, um, of a Sun move because I just had enough money to go from Havertz to Sun and now I've got nothing in the bank. Uh, my team's a bit of a mess at the moment. I really am not a fan of the team at the moment. Um, I need to do a lot of different changes. I do have a, a, a transfer kind of plan that I'm going to be doing that I'll talk about it later on in the video. Uh, but yeah, I just didn't really want to miss out on these fixtures for Sun. And I think like 60 or 70,000 people have already brought Sun in and he's got like 20,000 taking him out. So I think you'll probably get a price rise by the end of the international break. And I just couldn't really risk that. Um, so that's why I've decided to use an early transfer. Again, I never say to use an early transfer, because, especially during the international break, because anything can happen. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm guaranteed that I'm going to have an injury. I mean, I've already got a flag on Livermento. Like, if Livermento doesn't play, I'll just play Semedo at home to West Ham, which I don't really want to do. Um, but it is what it is. I'm hoping that Livermento is okay. Um, so yeah, that's my midfield. Mbumo, Rafinha, Salah, Sun. I do like the look of my midfield, to be fair. They've got some nice fixtures, I guess. We'll have to see what happens. And then coming up, up front, we have Jimenez at home to West Ham. 
Antonio away at Wolves, and then Vardy at home to Chelsea. I have so many players playing each other this year, uh, this week. It's really, really weird. Like Antonio is playing Jimenez, Vardy's playing Rudiger, Rafinha's playing against Son. Um, it's it's an interesting one. It is an interesting one. But um, yeah, the only reason I'm not getting rid of Vardy is because after the Chelsea game, he literally has Watford, who haven't um, keep, kept a clean sheet this season. Then Southampton, then Villa, then Newcastle. So. There's not really any reason to get rid of him. Yeah, Chelsea at home is annoying. Like, he's probably not going to return in that game either. But I'm kind of used to Jamie Vardy not returning because this is this is the FPL Now effect. This is when I brought him in. Here, game week nine. FPL Now effect. Look at them returns. 8, 11, 8, 8. I decide to bring him in. Big 1, 1, 2. Love it. Absolutely. The Morse code there is, uh, is ridiculous. But... Uh, yeah, it's just FPL. So, hope, I mean, I'm expecting another two. And then hopefully he does start returning because I know a lot of people are going to be jumping off Vardy soon. Uh, and then on the bench, I've got um, Sanchez, who, of course, uh, is flagged until the 27th of November. Then I've got Semedo, Sissoko, and Williams. Um, so those are my uh, my bench players. That's my team going forward into game week 12. And like I say, I'm probably not going to make any more changes because... Uh, I've already used my transfer. I just got to pray that there's no injuries. There's already been quite a few already. Like, I think Mount's pulled out, Shaw's pulled out, um, Pogba's pulled out with injury, um, and obviously Livermento's injured. Like, there's quite a few injuries already. So, it's not looking too good. Luckily, only one of the players that are injured at the moment I own, but hopefully he is okay. Um, coming up next, we're going to be going over transfers, though. Again, I've already used my transfer. I've got nothing in the bank. Um, already played my wild card. We're not in a good situation. I really don't like my team. I want to get rid of Semedo 100%. I do not want Semedo in my team. Um, the only reason I've kept him in is because after the West Ham game, he has Norwich and then Burnley. Um, so I'll keep him for those and then I'm definitely getting rid of him 100%. Uh, who I bring in, I really don't know because I have no money in the bank. Because what I think I'm going to do is um, we've got four like nice game weeks for Sun. And then on game week 16, I'm probably going to drop him. Uh, I'm going to drop him for Foden. Because Foden's uh, fixtures turn really, really nicely around then. If he's still like playing and if, if he's still nailed. Um, because around game week 15, like I'd love, um, I'd love, love, love Foden for game week 15. But at the same time, I mean, Norwich, Norwich at home, Watford away, Spurs again. I mean, I might even get rid of Sun around that game week. I'm not really too sure. But yeah, look at these fixtures for um, Foden going forward. They're just so, so nice. So I'll be getting rid of Sun for Foden. And then the decision here is whether I bring in uh, Cancelo as well, um, which because obviously I've got two mil in the bank, so I'll get rid of Semedo uh, around game week 15, which is when he's got a terrible, terrible fixture. Um, so I get rid of him and I bring in Cancelo for the really nice fixtures, um, which is uh, obviously 6.5 now. He just keeps going up. And I'd have 0 0.4 mil in the bank. These will probably go up even more by that time. Um, so that's why I kind of want the 0 0.4 just in case. Um, so I either do that or I um, keep Zemedo and I take out Vardy and I bring in Ronaldo who has also got some very, very nice fixtures. The thing is, Ronaldo I don't think is on penalties. Like game week 15, he has Crystal Palace, Norwich and Brentford, Brighton, Newcastle, Burnley, Wolves. Like his fixtures are just so, so nice. It just depends how United are playing at that time. Like he's going to score goals in these fixtures. Like he just is. He's one of the best players, if not the best player in the world. Um, but if I do that, I have 0 0.3 in the bank. And... I mean, I'd still be able to get rid of Semedo. I would just have to take a hit. I'll, I'll make sure I have two free transfers that week and barring like any ridiculous injuries. I'll have 0 0.3 in the bank. So, I mean, I could get rid of Semedo and then bring in maybe, I don't know, maybe like Luke Shaw or someone. And I just triple, I like just double up on United, which is not something I'd expect to ever do. Um, but obviously, if I do that and bring in Shaw um, this week as well and take a hit and do, bring in like three transfers, He's 5.2, which I just have enough money for. I'm guessing Shaw will um, go down in price a little bit more, though. Because, bro, literally, at the start of the season, he was owned by, like, 60% of the teams. Now he's 19.8. Um, but, yeah, he's just not been playing well, obviously. So I could bring in Shaw um, and just have enough money to do that. But that's, a, like, a while in the future. So I either bring in um, Cancelo and Foden, or I bring in Foden, Ronaldo, and Shaw. I have to get rid of Semedo for those, those game, week, game weeks, though, because um, Semedo's fixtures on game week 15 is Liverpool, then City, then Brighton, then Chelsea. Like, I, I also need to get rid of Jimenez as well um, for that game week. So there are a few things that I'll need to do. Uh, I might have to take a couple of hits, to be fair, because there's a lot of bad fixture runs um, coming up. Like, I'd have to get rid of Jimenez and Semedo at the same time, but I'd also need... I probably wouldn't need to get rid of Sun, but... Maybe, maybe that week I downgrade Jimenez into Tony to give me a bit more money and then that'll allow me to get rid of 
um, Semedo for sure. And then the week after, maybe I bring in Foden and Ronaldo. I'm not sure. It's going to be a tough one. There will be price uh, changes by then. We'll have to see what happens. But that is my team selection for game week 12. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to drop a like down below. Uh, let's try and hit 35 likes. Leave a comment. What is your team looking like for game week 12? Subscribe if you're brand new. We're trying to hit 1,000 subs by the end of the season. We're coming up to 700 subs. Uh, so yeah, if you haven't already, please do subscribe. It really helps out. Um, but that's everything from me. Have a fantastic rest of your day. And until next time, peace.